All right, my name is Fashion Ninja, or at work I go by Mike, because you don't really go by your handle at work. Um, how many of you went to B-Sides? Okay, how many of you have a badge? Okay, cool. So, obviously today we're gonna go about hacking this badge, that's the point of it. There are 12 challenges on here, and we're gonna solve all of them, even the ones that require people to plug in their badge. So that'll be fun. Um, do you guys have questions before we start? Like, no, there's 12. There's 12 LEDs, and then once all LEDs are going, then you, yeah, then you do the, okay, 13. <laughs> Any questions? How far did you guys get? I think I'm on four. You got four? I think, well, I got four lights blinking, so yeah. is that four? Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, yeah, four. I got three. Three? How many did you get, Pips? Two. Two? Okay. Well, I got, I, I got 12, so <laughs> you all suck. No, just kidding. Okay, um, hopefully this thing has enough power because I haven't charged it since the conference. Like, his sleep oh, mode. Yeah. <laughs> his sleep mode was pretty awesome. You got it on too? Um, no, I not on. I turned it off. First night, the on off switch, so I have to unplug the battery and plug it back in. <laughs> yeah, those switches suck. <sighs> Okay. Okay. Let's so let me get this turned on. So it's on right now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how to reset the badges if you want to. So the way you reset a badge is you turn it off and turn it on you get this Yeah, you get this blinking screen. Cool. This is going to work pretty well. I was a little nervous. And then what you do is you touch and hold, and you wait for the text to show up. And you wait until it gets about halfway through. And when it's about halfway through, you let go, and it brings in the calibration mode. So you calibrate the screen by following the instructions, and it asks if you want to reset your progress. Okay, and so what it does is it resets the progress, wipes all the lights away, and then gives you a new letter for your batch. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, so this badge, first I have to say, Waylon, you did an awesome badge, and thank you so much for doing it. Most of us loved it. You guys liked the badge, right? Yeah. yeah. You probably didn't hear, but everybody liked it. Um, and the art is gorgeous. Like, I love this art. So let's, I mean. He took a class for it, too. Yeah, he Sorry took, he said he took a class to learn how to draw it. I unfortunately missed his talk, so if they're cool with tidbits about it. I didn't do the talk either. I just... So we have this screen here. I did, he said he didn't like it. I remember he kept trying to get me to do it. <laughs> I said no. Um, so we have this screen here. Let me, let me turn the brightness down just a bit because what we need is kind of hard to see. So um, the first stuff, things that we need to do here is we need, we need to look around and figure out what we can do. So one of the biggest things with this badge was going around and pressing a bunch of stuff. So what we, you do is you go and you touch all the things. So like I touch this and we get an, a hint here that says it's dangerous to go alone, pair up, pair up five to find. Now, um, most of us figure that out, but there's this part here. Let's see, it's not gonna focus. Go to the, go show the robots first. So there's this part here, where you, this, this, these two connectors allow you to pair with other badges. So we'll show it. Go, go to the robots. No, we'll do it in a second. So we'll show you here, and you can connect them together. We're not gonna connect them yet, because that's a different section. But um, this is it. The one thing that he did a ton of was give us lots and lots of hints to tell us what to do. Can you guys, can you see it all right? Is it big enough? Yeah. Okay. The other thing that I found super interesting, it's hard to tell on the screen because of the compression, but this section right here was super weird because if you look at it, oh, there are squares and blocks to me that reminded me of QR codes. So I looked at that and I was like, that's a QR code. So what I did first is I, I like tried to take a picture of it and then scan it and I never did anything. But um, there's a cool hint in here 
Um, so like I said, touch all the things. So we started touching everything and nothing happened. But there are additional hints. Down here there's something called U2 missing. That's something we'll want to remember later. And then because he drew all of the art himself, it feels like every single thing has some sort of significance. So you're not going to be able to see it. But right here, let's see if I can get the focus right. You've got this clock here. And it's blinking, and it says 10... 07. So that's a hint to tell us what to do. Um, and then as we continue to do stuff in here, if you touch stuff, you can notice that these antennas move. Yeah, the antennas move. So the clock here is a hint, in this case, to tell us about the antennas. So... So we just take a picture of an analog clock. Sure. We've got 10 and 2. It's Terry, 10 and 7. It's 10, 0, 5, like 2 is. Yeah, 10, 0, 1 7. is 5, 2 is 10. So uh, uh, the, the 1 position is 5 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So 7 minutes. So 10, 0, 5. So you've got. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> so we've got two angles here that are helpful. And so what we do is we take these antennas, antennas, put it at the 10 and the 2 position, and then it stops, and we get a QR code. So that's the first one. And as soon as we do that, we get a blinky light right down here. Okay. Yep. It's super stupid. I didn't notice. No. Okay, so... What <laughs> light? <laughs> Like they're pre oh, okay, yeah. just that you got one. You get one, it shows you. Okay, one, one, one. Okay. Okay. one out of 12. Yeah. So I'm actually going to keep track of all of these because oh, cool. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, so number eight is the television. I don't think anyone's kept track of them yet. How do we know it's, oh, the, oh, the eighth LED? Yeah. yeah. So the LEDs have like markings on them. So it says LED eight on it. So that's why. And you also get the QR code on them. Yeah, and we get the QR code on the screen. So what I'm going to do is just take my phone and let's scan the QR code. So the, the, the unfortunate part is, is like if you haven't solved this stuff yourself, you see it, it's like, oh, that was so stupid. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of these were just simple, and I just was thinking too much about it. They were all super easy entry level in a bunch of different areas. OK, so if I scan it, I get this. This is what it decodes to. Yeah. Uh, this is random gibberish. So I saved that. Yeah, let's see. File new. There, there, there are sneak peeks of what's to come up above. <laughs> if you saw the rest. Yeah. So um, this is what it comes out to. We've got this this obvious gibberish here. Does anyone have any ideas of what it might be? One time pad. Okay, we got one time pad. Could also be uh, some kind of what? Uh, like a some cipher, sort of or some encrypted kind of, message. Yeah, some encrypted message. Some encryption. Or like a. Caesar yeah. Like a Caesar yeah. cipher. It could be a Caesar cipher. Yeah. Or a. Just like that. Like a. Could be like a character roll. Like, like a rock. So this this part is just pure encryption. Just, yeah. So you kind of have to figure out what it is. Um, we most people and the way it was meant to be solved was for you to move on and come back to it later. <laughs> That's not what I did. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, so I decided to crack it um, wow. and figure it out. And there are some hints here. You notice there's no punctuation, um, and there's no numbers. There's no like they've got spacing. Yeah. So they've got spacing here. So it looks like all it is is some sort of letter replacement um, cipher. So I thought, first thing, Caesar Cipher. That was the first thing I thought, because always. Yeah, always. So I wrote this tool a couple, like a year or two ago, that I call it Quick Crypto. Um, it's probably not the best tool out there. It's super janky. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what I use, because it's what I know. So me. Um, and so I use it. Brute forced it? So I put, dump it in there. And then what it does is it takes the text here, and it'll do an, a, a Caesar shift oh. of 13. And I can I switch. Raw 13. Yeah, but I've got this brute force feature, which does all the all, all of, them. of them. 
Yeah. Did that help you with anything? No. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I tried that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I went through all I'm of I'm like, these. wow, if you managed to, to, to get it from that, that would be incredible. But it didn't, it, it didn't solve. Yeah, okay. solve it. So uh, I kept going. I looked at a few other ones till I found there's this visionaire cipher. So. I wonder where this is going. So the visionaire cipher, um, so you can read about it, but let's pull up this tool. Basically what you do is you put in your cipher text and then you have to give it a key and then it tries to decrypt it. So I mean I tried down here with a common dictionary attack, <laughs> like none of this stuff worked, but I've done CTFs before. What's so funny is I did this immediately. Like I, like I actually didn't. I the QR code was the last thing I got, the last thing I got, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I happen to know a cool tool that's amazing for visionary ciphers. Yeah. It's some German guy's website. And it's called Golabala. I don't know. I don't speak German. <laughs> but uh, his site, what it does is it. I mean, it goes through cracking um, auto key ciphers and visionaire ciphers, and he also says he does Beaufort. These are all similar to the visionaire type. Um, he'll just go through and do static word analysis on it and solve it this way. So of course, since it's a German site, the default language is German, so we'll switch it to English. And we'll just, I'll just, I just hit break and I let it go, wow. and it solves it. Wow! But this is not how it's meant to be solved. Using the key and it knows the key. You're supposed That's to, cool. yeah, it figures out the key. So oh the, yeah, of course it would. So the key in this instance is the word forgotten. And then it gives us this text here. Um, so I'll take the text and I'll save it. Do you know how to actually do this Yes, one? I do. <laughs> uh, and then I'll show you guys how he meant to get it, but this is how I solved it, was using this tool. That's cool. I'm gonna keep that in mind for the future when I don't mm -hmm. have uh -huh. the, magic, like, the magic tool. Like, is, to solve like if if you. this guy's site ever goes <laughs> down, like I tried to <laughs> look, like no, it's not. It's PHP, what? but he gave us the PHP code, but his whole explanation of everything's in German, oh. so it's really hard. So that's the useful stuff is like the explanation as to why. Yeah, this and is working. yeah, that's yeah. Cool. But anyways, so great tool. We've got a bit of text. Um, it says. Transmit on channel five. So I'm just gonna, no boost, but amp and filter are needed. Disable feedback, medium bit rate, and center balance. Let's, let's actually leave the word and center balance. Finally use the mixer and mono output. So are we, at this point, who knows what that means. No, and he sent out a tweet after this saying I'm missing pieces to the QR code. Yep. So, but we'll look at that stuff later. Basically, we've solved this part and we'll just kind of put it in our back pocket and come to it later. The genius part about that is even though you could brute force it, it didn't, it actually didn't get you any further than you were supposed to be in the puzzle. Right. That's incredible. Right. Like some of the stuff, the thinking that he has in this puzzle or like in the game, just like the, the design stuff, right? That you know how to play the game by the time you got certain parts, you know, to talk to people by the time you have to talk to people, it's things like that is. I think it's really smart. And he said he said that was all just by okay. happenstance. All right, so that looks awful. <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna put that back because that's that's ugly. Turn your contrast off. There we go. Okay. So that's just the first room. So we're gonna move on. Um, and let's just look around for a second. So here we've got this, we exited the room by clicking the door. Um, there's a sign here that says 2710. I think red hair. I have this one, I couldn't find maybe. anything about it. Yeah. Um, there's, there, there's like a hacker radio like that's 2710 yeah. something, and I don't remember what No, I it think was, it's but... just like, yeah, like 2700, and then 2710 would be like a radio. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so, <laughs> so we're going to click stuff, and so we click this guy. Oh, oh, we can't read that, can we? Let's let's. That'll be a good thing to focus on. Did Waylon do the voices too? He, no, he got them from somewhere. So it says here, take a coin and go call a large number or something. All right. Well, we've got telephones where we can dial numbers, and so I tried just like typing all kinds of large numbers, and nothing ever happened. So we'll come back to that. Both of these telephones, they look like they do the same thing. 
and there's nothing special here. So if we come up here, we've got this live wire thing now. It's kind of freaking out because he's got a light sensor built into this badge. So if you look at this chip right here, this chip is a light sensor. So right now it's daytime and the sign says, uh, Open after dark. Yeah, it says open after dark. Um, but so when I get the light just right, so if I cover it, it goes dark and it's nighttime now. Um, and we can go into oh. cover the whole right side of the badge. Actually, yeah. the sensor sometimes isn't that great. So then we we can oh my gosh, it picks it up through your the, the light in your finger. So then we can go <laughs> into actually does. yeah. Then we can go into this dance room. Thing. And then click stuff. I click that button up there. It says, can you feel it? Okay. Click around. We click these and they have different sounds. All right. There's nothing else we can do in this room. Then let's go out. And then I come here and then there's these robots. I click them. It says unauthorized. Okay. Uh, I click this here. It says move U22. Which is similar to this thing here that says U2 missing. Now, if you look on the badge itself, this part here says U22. Now, on most people's badges, there's a piece here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you come down to this part, it says U2 right there. And this piece was not populated. So if it said move U22 up here, and it says missing U2, that's the second one, is we gotta move that there. But we will get to that in a minute because we don't have a blinking light for having solved that. But what we do now have a blinking light for having solved, do you see this? This is for entering the dance room. So down here, so this is the one we saw before. Now we've got LED six. Oh, you get one for Ent figuring the out the dance sensor, room. The yep. Okay. So entering the dance room. Call it light sensor. No. Oh. It's a light sensor. That's but it's only if you enter the dance room, though. I guess so. Enter dance room. Okay. Cool. So that's the other challenge. Oh, wake up. Now let's go over here. So this is the a cool room. You can like draw stuff. And then you click random things. And then you get this garbage can. Ooh, I really want you to be able to see that. Okay, so you can't really see that. But if you have your badge, you can, be, you can come here. What it says is it says it's a memory dump. And then there's a bunch of gibberish until we get to this spot here. It says Etsy Shadow. Does anyone know what Etsy Shadow is? Password directory. Yeah, it's where Linux stores its passwords. And then if you keep going, you recognize, like right here, it says dollar sign, one dollar sign, then some hex, and then a dollar sign, and then some more, what looks like base 64. So that, if you recognize that, that's a password hash format. So that was another challenge. So um, I will save this here. Another thing to note about that room is if you go in there and immediately click on the dumpster, I don't think it pulls up that thing. You have to draw on the wall before you click on the dumpster. Well, let's find out. I'm pretty sure. Open the dumpster. There it is. Yeah. You just go in there. Like sometimes it's weird. It is weird. It sometimes it doesn't pop up oh, right away. It's just, oh, okay. And then there's another spot. See, watch. There. I thought you had to draw on the wall to make it. No, I, I think there's one thing. There's also there the, thing the crash, the right there. So, yeah. let me, so let me show you about the brakes that. thing. So I talked to him about it. He said if you just, it's just random. It, every you time you open it. Every time you open this, you've got a 1 in 20 chance. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> I see. Of this there showing up. <laughs> 
Uh, I could, I like, I tried forever to figure out like how to make this happen. Uh-huh. And I was, I he just said it's a one in twenty wow. chance. <laughs> That's good to know. Is that a challenge? And it's not a challenge, <laughs> and it doesn't mean anything. Like, there's no extra lights, and I could, but it's a cute it, little hint. No, it it, it kind of does mean something a little bit. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it has correlation to the. But I'll later. show you. Okay, so the next challenge is to deal with these guys. Okay. And so you can't really see it very well, but there's a letter up here in the corner of everybody's badge. And uh, everybody gets a random letter for themselves. And my letter here is U. This is, this is one of my favorite parts. Um, and so what you do is, so this is Pips's badge. N- neither of us have anything. And they said that you need to connect with five friends. What's Pips's num- letter? His is T. 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 Cool. Okay, so if we combine them together, Plug them into these ports here. Okay, it makes a beep, so and then he beep. gets a person, and, this is and I get a person, and we. That's the U person. And that's yep. the T person. Okay, so I got a T because I plugged into a T. He got a U because he plugged into a U. Okay, thanks, Pips. So one of the cool things we're gonna do is we're gonna learn a little bit more about this communication. So um, we hacked it. So now we don't have to actually plug into people's badges. Um, And if you look at this here, you can't see it again, but this says ground, it says RX, it says TX, and it says ground. And if you recognize that, that's usually a serial communication. So we've got basically a UART device here Um, This is an FTDI chip that lets you do serial communication over USB. And um, I'm going to show you what the thing actually looks like. So I'm going to get the ground and the receive. So what I do is I'm getting the ground and the receive cables plugged into here. And so ground is orange. Okay. And I plugged it into my laptop. Okay. Um, now, I mean, to have these chips, you probably need to install the drivers and all that fun stuff. And then to have. Oh, I hope it's going to work. Okay, here we are. And then. Baud rate. Can't Yeah. So uh, I'm using screen, and I'm just going to connect to my serial device here. And then there's a bunch of known baud rates. Are you, are you doing um, receive first to show yeah. all that it's stuck? Yeah. There's a bunch of known baud rates. And so the trick is you just need to try all of them until it works. There's better ways to do it, but. I mean, it's not even this in is that. The, it's not even in that list. Right there. That, oh, 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 it is. Huh? But right. I was, but we're lazy, <laughs> <laughs> so we just try them all. Okay, so I turn it on. Now let's let's plug it in. Let's see if I can get a good connection. Two males. Oh yeah. Um. So I got receive. Red. Oh, it's okay. You have to have the screen on. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. The, your, your, your thing can't go to sleep. That's right. Jam them under the, like the solder point to the plastic. Okay. So let's go back, take a look. And if we see, what it's doing is it's sending this message over and over. So it's one dash agile. Okay. So... What we did is we went through and looked at all the different badges, kind of. We'll show you later what we really did. Um, one guy did actually do it this way, though. But, yeah, one guy did this, and we got all of the, um, the, the messages that they send. And so um, and then I wrote a Python script to send them. So each character has a special code attached to the, the thing that it's sending over the transmit and the receive, right? So for his character, 
It was one agile. One agile. And that would be the U character. And that's the U character. Then right. we have two drive, three might, four heart, and then five vigor. And that unlocks a U N I T E. So the word that it spells out with your characters is unite. Um, but under the hood, we've got these weird words like agile the drive. That it's sending over serial to unlock them. Right. So um, what I'm going to do is just connect my FTDI chip. Let's see, to the transmit pin this time. To the transmit pin. And I'm just going to plug straight in here. Let's see, ground is this one. To the receive pin. Then I'm going to run my little Python script. I call it no friends because we have no friends at B-Sides. <laughs> and then, and if you look, <laughs> it unlocks all the characters, <laughs> which is pretty fun. I'm glad he didn't do a super hard um, serial system or it would have been too hard for me to figure out. Yeah, <laughs> everything was like, it's so cool because there's so many little bits, like easy entry into lots of little things. Right, but um, if you just, the, the way you're supposed to solve this, obviously, is, your battery going out? Oh. is you're supposed to plug, you're supposed to plug into everybody, but we didn't because we, I don't have everybody with me. So we just solved it. Once we get all the people, um, the robots end up smashed, and we can pass them. So then we, we do the normal and click bunch of stuff, and it brings us up to this room. And yep. Now, if you look, oh, shoot. Does anybody need characters right now, if, you wanna, if you're going along? Do you yeah. Wanna do you want to come up, and I'll give you characters? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is. So once you have the character, you know that's all the characters, or do you start to do it with five characters? You have to do. You have for for every badge, you have to find all five characters. But if you, you give it to me, yeah. I'll I'll fake. Oh, you just you close it. Yeah, he's, he's I, brute forcing all five onto your <laughs> device for you. Okay. And we just taught you how to do that if yeah. you ever need to. So, <laughs> I and I also got to figure out what uh, light this does. So come over and watch it too as he's doing it. Like, so we'll plug it in. It'll be like boom, boom. I feel like boom, it was a bit inconsistent too. Did you notice that at all, or was I just tripping? Like... Okay. There you go. Sweet. He's got him. Okay, and then what LED did it unlock? Uh, let's just try the other. Try yeah, another a new one. The one down there by the pin. Okay. All right. Let's see. I think it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, it is that one. Let's try. Pretty sure. Yep, yep, it's nice. that one. So that's pin 11. So let me write that down. France. Um, <laughs> okay. And, and I'll post this Python script online so everyone can have it. <laughs> okay. Everybody got it? Uno mas. Anybody else need friends? Um, one, tri friends. <laughs> one trick that we found when we were at the conference is that you can do yourself yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, by, by touching the transmit yeah. and the receive pins together. By jumping it? Yeah. Nice. And, the, and then you can, you can be oh, your own cool. friend. <laughs> you can be your own friend by jumping yourself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's that. Cool. We got friends. Uh, well, we don't have friends, but... <laughs> We have technology. Um, so, you don't need friends if you have technology. <laughs> if you, it, um, does somebody? Can I see somebody's badge who we just did? Who didn't jump? Oh. Yeah, who didn't jump? Who's not un all unlocked? I'm all unlocked. Okay, somebody who hasn't done the solder stuff. Okay, perfect. So, if you come up here, um, you'll see that this here, it's like sparking. Mm -hmm. Um, it's because this piece is broken. That, now, that looks similar, right? Oh, this is so hard to see. I wish you guys could see better. Wish my camera was not junk, but whatever. So it's kind of like sparking. You've got that white there. So what you need to do is to desolder this piece then solder it to this slot. And if you do desolder it here to here, it unlocks another light and it fixes it so it's no longer flashing. So that's the other challenge. What, what chip is that? Um, that's the actual chip. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure. It looks like just a little. Six, six pins. Oh. 
a little lost pad or something. It's like a tiny switching. Okay. We can look. I don't know the name of it, but on the board it says Get. He's got everything in his kit hub. Yes. Okay, so let's see. Do you have like a bomb or something? I hope so. <laughs> I don't see one though. He's got his slides. Tools, source, eagle. Schematic. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so. U2? U2 and U22. It's a dial. Op, op amps. Or, what is that? It's an op, or op uh, amp, the amplifier, basically. An amp, yeah, so it just yeah. takes the, the signal and boosts it a little bit. Well, depending on how you wire it, it can boost it or suppress it, okay. or can you use some. But it just continues it stuff. through, basically, right? So, it's basically, it's basically a very basic signal processing. We were wondering if we could just, if you could just go in there and figure out what to jump with some basic wires and not actually have to move it. Um, but I, we weren't familiar yeah. with what the actual part was. <laughs> you, so you, depending on what it did and what kind of signal is going through there. Yeah, he's like not expecting so, so, to so, 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 so look at this. Look at this there, here. We, work, this right? is, this yeah, is the yeah. piece that's there now. This is the piece that we place it. So if the, the direction changes. Oh, that's uh, how. So you can't just you can't. And it's just. the way he's pinned it. So it's just changing the directions. Probably uh -huh. we have a no connection signal, and uh -huh. then you move it to the down place, and then it connects. It basically yeah, connects okay. it. Okay. Cool. Anyways, do you think it's testing to see if the the chip in the original spot on the board is removed? If you just jump the second I, one, maybe he'll be like, well, they didn't actually take it. I doubt it. No, I no, doubt no. it. Okay. That's just a dead spot. Yeah. Because okay. if you look on the board. There's actually like no, there's no traces. Oh, there's no okay. traces <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, 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 no it's traces. Anything. It's not connected. To, it's just connected okay. to the ground plane. Uh, <laughs> so maybe if you if you so so he just it, checks. Okay. So with that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, then we click here, and we get a number ten to the ten to the one hundred. Okay. Let's remember that. Then we open this door, and it gives us a code. So I like I tried things typing 10, 10, 100, and it like failed. That sounds like a pretty big number. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's a good. <laughs> so if you do 10, 10, 100, you type it in Google. What are you 10 to the 10 to the 100 is a Googleplex. <laughs> and uh, there's a website with the Googleplex written out. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in volumes. Volumes. <laughs> I paginate it for you. <laughs> but so so this is if it's like one followed by a few hundred zero. <laughs> um, but he makes a good point. It's a very large number, and somebody told us to do something with a very large number. We had this guy here say, "Take a coin and go dial a very large number." So I'll admit that. I tried doing this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I tried 10, 10, 100 there too. And, and nothing happened. So 10, yeah. 10, 100, nothing. No, well, this, this took me a while. So, but, so yeah. what you do if, is... If, you, if, you, if you've never had an actual phone, you know, a touch tone phone in your life, I can understand why. Yeah, 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 you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there are letters. You, you type the word out. You type G-O-O-G-O-L-P-L-E-X. And you get some cool noise. It's like your old cell phone. You know, your old you modem phone. sound. And it brings you to the mainframe. And it asks you for a password. So where do you guys think we get a password from? That password hash. Bam! We had a password hash before. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So now we've got a password hash, and we've got crack it. So we decided to crack the password. And it's not too bad. Um, but I used a tool called Hashcat to crack this password. So... Um, First thing we need to do is come up with a hash format um, for Hashcat. So you can just do a quick Google search. Come here for the hash format. We know it's Linux, and so you could do some research on how Linux does its stuff. 
Um, but I'll just save you the hassle and show you that this one here matches our format. We've got a dollar sign one. We've got some hex looking values, then a dollar sign, and then some stuff that looks like base 64. Um, this is our hash format that we have so uh, we know right GD5. here. Dollar sign, right. hex, base 64 stuff. Mm -hmm. So the, tra the, the format is, it's an MD5 format. Um, and for your information, it's MD5 with a salt. So this right here is the salt. And then this just tells you what format, which is MD5. And so specifically, we're going to use its MD5 crypt Unix, and we can use the mode 500 for hash cap. So I'm going to insert the hash into a file. I'm going to do hash cap dash A0, which is for word list. We're doing a word list attack, and I'll show you why in a second. M for mode 500. Then we give it the example hash file, and then the word list that everybody uses for this stuff is the rock U word list. Unless they're trying to make it hard and it's really about password cracking. If it's not, it's about just learning to use it or doing your first one. Always try rock U first. So if we run hashcat and let's see, okay, I'm on Mac, so I gotta do dash O because for the drivers for Mac. Uh, oh, but you do? Yeah. Okay. That's probably see it says why. some some weird thing we got to do. But if you just let it run for a little bit, it'll go through all of them. And uh, did it finish? Exhausted, guess Q. Oh, maybe I don't do dash O. I forget. You did a class on it. Yeah, I know, but. <laughs> Shut up. I know how to do it. <laughs> it's because of the Mac stuff. Freaking Mac. So is this it trying everything until it finds one? Yeah, so what it does is it uses the rock, yeah, rock U word, word list, word list uh, and it tries all it. of them until oh, it's... Oh, it hashes it, checks it. Yeah. 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 I tried to use John the Ripper just to brute force it. I cut it off after 24 hours. Yeah, don't use John. And then I use the word, I use the rock U word list thing. Got right to it, so I'm just curious. Okay, let's see. Still going. Whoop. Oh yeah. I'm gonna let it go in the background. Nonetheless, I will tell you what the password is, because I don't wanna wait. Uh, the password ends up being something called Max Power. Right? Max Power. Yeah. I don't know if it's from, from the, anything. From the Simpsons? <laughs> I think it's from Pat. I don't know. There's a max power. I'm pretty sure. From that's, yeah. I'm pretty sure that someone's handle and okay. their name. Let's see. Hackers the movie. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's a combination of two handles in the movie. There's a max Simpsons power. episode where he changes his name to Max Power. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or is Max Power also that? Oh no, was that Max Power that that hack? The Max Power TV hack? Is that what it is? I don't know what it is. Ah. So um, it is. By the way, getting into this mainframe, dialing that number. That's number 12, so dial the number. Okay, so once we're in here, we can do max power. Perfect, and it logs us in. And that unlocks another one here, so that's LED2. That's enter mainframe. Enter mainframe password. Okay, so that's the next one. And then well, you do what you always do in a terminal and you ask for help. You can type help and then you've got some stuff here. Um, we've got the command enforce, cease, debug, shutdown. Um, enforce says start T enforcement project, stops enforcement project. That's where the freaking typo was. I was trying to remember where it was. Um, displays current <laughs> assembly and halts the mainframe. So if I just type enforce, it says it's already in operation. And then if I type cease, it says sorry, I will not comply. I don't remember the rest. So Shut just, down. We've got debug. debug. Oh, geez. <laughs> So this is assembly, 
We'll get to this one later. <laughs> this is the hardest challenge in the whole thing. Um, but obviously we've got to do something with this assembly. Um, but I'm just going to hit back and we'll get out. So we've done as much as we want to do there. Let's... Uh, you could throw the shutdown command, but it's just going to not work again. Yeah. Seats and stop this. So let's go back to the dance room because this is fun stuff. Um, yeah. So once we're in the dance room, we've got to do something with these paddles. Okay. So he gives us a nice little hint here. Oh, this is going to be hard to see. Let's see if I can... You're not going to be able to see it, but on the bottom of this badge here, oh, there's notes. There's notes. <laughs> I never saw that. Yeah, there's notes down there. They've got this little sharp symbol, I think it is. Flat. Flat. I don't know music. So, so let me show you what I did. So what I did is I just I started with the bot because you've got these dots here and then there's lines. Um, let's actually see if there's a better way to show you this. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to. So what I did is I just I gave them numbers. So the bottom two are one, one, and then you count up to one, two. So that's five. It's on the fifth one, the fifth one up, and you've got three, three, two, four, two, five. Okay. And then, we f it took a while to figure this part out too, but it goes one, here, two, three, four, five. If you've got a good ear, you can like hear it go up and down, but I didn't. So just type one, one, five, five, three, three, two, four, two, five. And once you do that, everyone starts to dance. Because <laughs> they liked our song. Okay, let's see. It starts playing music too. Yeah, and it starts playing music. See? Um, now, another LED just turned on. I gotta figure out which one it is. I think it's nine. I think it is nine. Okay, so nine is play the dance song. I'm gonna call it the dance off. Dance off song. Okay, so that one's solved. And this door over here, it opened up. So we can go into that room. Isn't that the poster back there? Doesn't that do something? Yeah. Yeah, and so well, now. Isn't that part of the notes? The poster back in the back, or no? Can you feel the it? The poster yeah. says, can you feel it? I don't know. I don't know what that. Maybe, maybe it doesn't have to do with the song, actually. That's yeah. what I was thinking, but I, mean, I don't know. It doesn't yeah. sound like the song that it's a Jackson 5 song. But. but, so we're in the arcade, and we do what we always do is we click all the things. Oh, and then we get a game. So this is Tetris. I mean, not Tetris. Space Invaders. Space Invaders. And so we got to play Space Invaders. So I'm going to play live in front of everyone. Oh, boy. <laughs> Good luck. There you go. First time, like you said. I don't, I don't think you're going to make it, dude. <laughs> There's way too many already. <laughs> oh, game over. Oh, man, game over. Wow! Okay, the trick with Space Invaders is not to click and press. It's to click and hold, hold and drag. Oh, game over. <laughs> okay. Whew, whew. I, was, I was in front of everyone. <laughs> okay. So we beat Space Invaders. Awesome. That probably unlocked the light. Let's see. So six, seven. Yeah, unlock seven. So. Space Invaders. Perfect. Okay, so we're more than halfway done, like well over halfway. We've got four left. If you want to, I'll start sliding and you can, well, I'll explain some stuff. Yeah, so I'll, um, we'll do, I'll have you do it in a sec. Well, actually, I'll have you do it now. So the next part is it opens up, if you didn't notice, this panel shows up after we beat Space Invaders. And if you click it, it brings my favorite part of the whole challenge. A it's a slide puzzle. 
and it sucks. <laughs> this is the hardest one. It took like two and a half hours. Oh, no. <laughs> I did it twice today. There's Kay. some tricks I want to show you so, guys on it. There was there was a trick that we did. I want to show. I can explain it to you live. Okay, but let me before we do that. Um, I want to show you a cheap thing that most people did. Uh, no. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, just show us your work slack. Uh, or a private conversation. Uh, how many slacks? B sides. Yeah, so many B sides. Okay, so B sides uh, was very nice to us, and there's some pinned items, including back when we were oh, doing the challenge. Like. I pinned what it looks like. Uh, so nice. this is what it looks like solved, um, but you just gotta slide puzzle it out, man. Mine's slide puzzle oh. it, bro. Oh, if yours is full, that means it's glitched. Wow. You have to leave the room and re-enter it. Also, if you ever leave the room and re-enter it, it resets the whole yeah. puzzle. Yep. So don't leave the room. So don't leave the room. What if your bad goes? Can I show some stuff? On yeah. That so so it we'll have him show. Do you have to leave the nightclub? No. <laughs> I think you actually have to turn it off works. and on. You have to turn the whole device off and on again. So so the biggest things to notice here are wait, first of all. Wait 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 wait. Oh, I don't have a camera. There we go. Oh, okay. Go. All right. The biggest things to notice here are first of all you have these these three dots on some of these pieces. And those are uh, those are the the location of those pieces. So like my first corners. thing would be yeah like the corners is to just try and work these into their individual corners. Okay. Uh, Slide puzzles, guys. <laughs> literally the best. Okay. So you get those in their corners, and then the next big clue is the edges of the pieces. Uh, what, what you'll see is that if you follow this edge right here, you'll see there's this blue line coming down and, and the green edge of the tile, and you see it doesn't match up with the one below it, right? So you can tell that these squares are all different tiles to line up with where they fit in this like array, right? And so you can use this tile sizes to help you decide where those tiles go, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is try to get the left edge sorted out. Uh, and I, like, so the first thing I did, I was like, I just, I looked at one of, um, I'm just looking at these pieces, and I'm like, well, this, this one looks like it has a nice chunky edge. I'm going to move this one over there and try it out, right? Ah, oh, look, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> see? <laughs> so you see the edge lines up all the way in there, and this all fits now, right? Uh, where's my next chunky edge? Like maybe this one, but that looks like it won't even fit anyways. So this guy here, right? Uh, so let's try grabbing that one and moving it in there. Uh, you know, and in true slide puzzle fashion. That doesn't fit. <laughs> uh, so where's my next piece? Uh, this guy, no. This guy? No, just tried it. It's got it's got to be a. Oh, it's got straight through, somewhere. You want to cheat? It's this I one. Hate this thing already. Look, it's, <laughs> I guess I can. It was that one. It was that one. Yeah. This guy. Yeah, that guy. That's okay. the one. Oh, I was right. Okay. Oh, I I know what I did wrong. Okay. Because this goes here and this goes here. There we go. So that's see this. These are all matching up now. Um, now. The, basically, the, the next thing I try to do is to get this guy down uh, and this guy above it. So uh, this, I'm just trying to work over. Oh, eh, fun. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, like, I hate it, but it's really well done. I know. Yeah, you just play the side puzzle stuff. Yeah. So, so I'm going to start doing that. You can. Um, do you want to show him the decoding on that piece? Yeah. So he is going to do the side puzzle while we do the rest of the stuff because that takes like 20 minutes. So I'm going to work with his batch for a minute. So if you can tell, his, his is all solved. But um, basically what happens is you solve the fly puzzle and then that's about the end of this chain. So we have to go back out. Oh, look, this is a solved version of the side puzzle. Cool. Okay. 
I just exited your solve version oh, of the slide yeah, puzzle. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so we go out. They're all dancing. We come up here. And we've got to deal with this this door. Like, we've got to come up with a number. Like, we, I don't remember any other numbers. But there's a hint. Well, not really a hint. Uh, there's this stuff here on the le right. Mm -hmm. And then this is what helps us with these numbers. So... If you turn it sideways, um, see if I can get you, get a good shot because the, the background is black. There we go. Uh, you see that the, there are four dots like that. You've got your dot system, and then you've got holes that are filled and holes that are unfilled. And I don't know if any of you recognize what this is, braille. but it's Braille. So we need to convert this from Braille to English. So let's see if we can we can do that real quick. So we've got four dots up top. So let's see. Okay. Four dots up top. So, so we've got a G. And then D, B, uh, G, D, B. H A C. Okay, so we got GDB H A C. So that's that's what our Braille comes into. And Wait, what? that's no use. That's not useful. <laughs> you want the you want the Braille letters, bro. So, braille numbers. So what I tried to do was this is what I tried and this failed. So I did uh, phone numbers. So like not phone numbers like Oh. Yeah. So I took something like this and I went, okay, like before, <laughs> we've got G. G is four. D is three, two, four, two, two. So I turned it into that. So let's, let's try that number out. Uh, four, three, two. Oh, it failed. It's four digits. Yeah. So that it, that didn't work. So I thought, well, crap. What could this be? Do any of you guys have ideas? Phone number to dial. That's not a real phone number. On the phone. Wait, what are you doing? Maybe we are, but we already found out what to solve dial, on the phone. Dial the phone. Okay. Oh. I'll give you. Uh, do you just want me to tell you? No. No. Okay. Really? Think, we'll throw out a hint, and then you can, <laughs> then you can tell us. You need to take these letters, and we need to turn it into something we can type into as numbers. As you what? Said, did you say a maximum of four numbers, though? Uh, How do he you said solve that, this? No. I think it's okay. six. So then would it just be maybe Isn't the that number that, that wait, each no, letter G's is in the alphabet? Okay, let's try that. So what number in the alphabet is G? Seven. Seven. <laughs> what number is D? Two, Seven. Four. Two, four, two, eight, one, three. Dang. That is, <laughs> that is fantastic. Dude, dude, go pull up Braille number conversion. Let's go pull it up real fast. Wait, really? Yeah. That is so fantastic. <laughs> okay, now just do a, a straight decode. Seven. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no idea. Okay, well, that's how I solved it, was doing it this way. <laughs> okay, so. That's a cool thing about Braille, though, I just learned. That's incredible. So okay. The numbers and letters are the same? No, they're not. The they're, seventh letter is the same as the seventh uh, number. The seventh oh. number, yeah. but. The char I don't know how they did that, the, but the characters are different in the Braille conversion table. Interesting. That is crazy. Anyways, so. I think it's upside down. Is it the upside down? I don't know. That's weird. Okay, so. Seven, four, two, eight, one, three. Bam! And that brings us in. That was fantastic. Okay, and so then now we're in this room here. Oh, and this is the... And what is this? These words, do they look familiar? This is the QR code. Yeah, it's the QR code. 
Okay, so, um... How's it going on the slide puzzle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks. So let's play with this a little bit. So let's look at what we did. Okay. So... You got it? Okay. <laughs> okay. We're, we're not going to work on this. We're going to go and look at the side puzzle bit. Okay, so here he solved it. And this opened LED 4, is it? Yeah, LED 4. So that's slide puzzle. Okay. Now, there's another challenge here. See those light blinking over there? That's lights. I've got a video of that on my phone. Yep. Probably uploaded. So, this is the blinking lights. Now, I'm not gonna decode that for you guys right now, cause I never did. Really? But nope. Oh. But this comes out to the word for forgotten, right? Yeah. Yep. And so, what, do you know how to do that decode? So I assume that these are ones and zeros, yep. and that each one, each blink is a byte, cause you can tell that there's eight of these. And then each byte will and go to like ASCII. And then it repeats. Yep, it goes to ASCII, and then you just do the byte to ASCII, which gives you the word forgotten, which we could then use to decode the this visionary. This is also a clue that it's repeating is a clue here. Is it? Huh? What's the clue? Well, for decoding the visionary, well, it's not a visionary, it's, it's, it's a one-time pad. It, it, it's a visionaire. No, it's a one-time pad. It's a visionaire. That, a, a visionaire is a one-time pad that, that the, where the repeats. key is repeated. Yeah, repeating. Yeah. So, like, well, okay. So this is what I, yeah, this is what I did. I just copied, you know. So I, like you said, it's it's binary, com convert it to to ASCII. To ASCII. And then it spells forgotten. Yep. Uh, and then you type forgot over and over, and what you can over and over. And you can, or one, you can do it in there, You can one-time pad it, or you can do it visionaire, but. We, we decrypted it right at the beginning, so we don't need to deal with this. Thank you. We now have another LED. So we've got one, two, three left. Three lights. So, um. Why do I have a wallet? That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go back up here. Um, entering this room. Let's see, this is gonna be another one. So. Seven, four, two, eight, one, three. Okay, and that turns on. That decrypt of the two. Is incredible, dude. One. Okay, so this is entering the door code. Yeah, door code. Okay, so this is great. Um, but we already know how to solve this, right? So we've got this bit here, transmit on channel five and all this stuff, but we're gonna come back to this because once we do this, this is the last bit in solving the whole puzzle. So we're gonna go back to the mainframe. So we'll just come back in here in a little bit and solve it later. So the mainframe, come here, type our Googleplex. Wait for it to finish. <laughs> okay, enter our password that we cracked. Actually, I'm curious. Did it solve it? Nope, didn't solve it. Mac is, oh, that's supposed to be dad. However. Just type in Mac powers that are rocky. Put it in the text file. Yeah. And see if it crashes. Cracks it, right? Yeah. I'm just going to let that run. <laughs> okay. M, oh. M A X P O W E R Max Power, we're in debug. Okay, so we've got this debug here. Uh, you're not going to be able to read that, but we need to walk through it, and it's kind of important. So, we need to really walk through the first three lines. so um, when I was doing it, I typed it up, which just makes it nice for all of us. Okay, and so this is assembly, and I'm not any good at assembly. Um, but I was good enough to solve it. And so what we'll do is wa I'll walk you through it as best we can. Um, the important parts to note are this line here, yeah. this line here, this line here, and then this line here. Crumples. 
Yeah, and so and then this is kind of important too. So what we want to do is figure out what's happening. So this is the beginning of the header. I'm not the best person to explain how to do uh, assembly. assembly, but I'll I'll try my best. This is the function header, so it's not super important. But what happens here is we've got a move here, and so. I'll, hold on. So the very first thing that's happening is it's taking the command that you're pushing into. Do you know how to do assembly? I, I mean, a little bit. I can talk you through okay. the first four lines. Come, come talk <laughs> us through. So, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good idea of what's happening. So the very, the very first thing. Um, Sit down and get the mic. Yeah. I kind of. Um, so a good clue is, well, I also want to show this screen. How do I do that? Three finger swipe. Okay. Uh, see that command in? That's, that's, uh, this is a good first clue. So you have command in, and then that's going to be, um, you're basically pushing that command. I believe it's going into like some kind of a buffer. Um, so, so in assembly, uh, you, ha you have like different registers of where you can like store uh, bytes of memory. And you have like a buffer area, but that buffer area is, you know, like only so big. So you're trying to like move stuff into the buffer, work with it, and then finish and stick it into a register, store it like into a variable, essentially. So the first thing that's happening here, this is the, uh, let me just go back to this so we're not bouncing around, um, <laughs> is it's basically saying, I believe that it's, it's taking the command that came in and it's moving it from the like temporary storage buffer into an actual uh, storage register. Yeah, it's base. Like oh, is that the base pointer? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, is it sitting at the frame? I don't like so. That's that. Do you know assembly? So, yeah, it's, it's the worst. Time, <laughs> that was my understanding is that somehow it's like it's like reading the command and then um, and then and then basically the idea here is it's it's called a canary. Well, hang on, uh, hang on. We'll get, we'll get there. <laughs> okay, we'll get there. Okay, okay. so yeah. yeah, maybe I'm doing a worse job at this thing. Nobody wants to. <laughs> So what it does here is it takes this static value um, and then dumps it into a, a specific spot. And what it does is it takes this pointer and then it goes uh, up this far in hex. So you've got your pointer here that it points to or the, the top of the heap. It goes up 12 spots above it and then it, and it puts this value there. Yeah. Okay. And then what you do is um, it, let's see, then right here we've got load. So, um, and it's, let's see, where, okay. So we've got this command here called call read. And what this does is this reads the input in. And then it uses the last three things to push onto it. So let me, let me see if I can show you. Oh, yeah, that's Man. <laughs> Uh, read. So if we look at this is not the one I want. Yes, this is what I want. So um, what it does is it reads from a file descriptor and so we've got this read function and it takes in three inputs. So you've got your FD which is what it calls the file descriptor. You've got your void buffer pointer um, and then you've got your size. So basically the file descriptor, what we want to put in, and how much to put how, in. How big, big yep. the size of that buffer. Yep. And so let's look back here. And the way that it does it is uh, oh. we've got here, this is our file descriptor. descriptor. Uh -huh. This is the buffer or where to, uh, yep, where to place the buffer, sorry. And then this, this one here is how much to read. So basically... Uh -huh. Um, this EAX, what it does is we get that from here. So we've got this here and what it says is take the stack pointer, go up 28. So, you know, so it's setting a memory location into that, that variable EAX, essentially when you're saying EAX, uh, is the memory location where you're storing. Right. So I'm just going to do some paint real quick cause it's, cause I'm lazy. Paint. Yeah, I don't like this. In a browser. I like where <laughs> this is going. Okay, so we've got here. Here's your. Wow, that was not what I wanted. Hit undo. Okay, we've got 
this is you know where your normal stack is with its normal stuff and then above uh, what we do is we've got it points to so we've got here so this one here where we wrote a bit of data is 12 slots above so let's count up 12 and then put it here okay and then then we start loading and we call read and we want to write so what it does is say take this pointer here so eb minus 1c and then hex that's 28 so take this spot here and go up 28 spots and this is where we'll begin to write and then it says write how much should we write we should write a ton like a flip ton <laughs> like as much basically as much as we want a lot more than 28 or 12 so we start writing here and it takes our input and begins to fill in and if we only write a little bit you know we'll only write to you know say this spot and then though all those spots are filled and then the rest of it stays the same but if we continue to write we can write all the way down here oh including overriding this value that was written before and we can even go far enough that we mess up where we're currently reading. In fact, we can mess up and say uh, this spot, actually let's swap over here, the spot here in memory. So wherever this CMDL, um, this CMDL, this very line right here is, if I understand right, this spot right here at the top. So because if you see we take push EBP and we're, we're basically putting the ESP and you know we're doing all that stuff so we can get to the point where if we're executing say we we've called read where's call read right here if we call right here see th this spot the next line we could go to the point where that that read line is right here but we can even write to what the next line is and so we can change what the code ends up being so this is classic buffer overflow, but he wrote a protection in there in case that happens. And that's what this stuff here is. And so he mentioned the word canary. Um, can I borrow your batch real quick? And he has a hint for the canary. If we look up here on the tower, you've got this little birdie here. Oh yeah, tweet, tweet. Maybe click it, he tweets. I forgot, oh, I totally forgot about that. It's so that, hard to get yeah. him to tweet though. Whatever. Yeah. I like it, <laughs> but that's supposed to be a hint that there's a canary. There's a canary. Yep. Uh, and so if we look up, uh, there's also another hint on it. Where? Well, the canary itself. Oh, is there? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you can see all my history. <laughs> Assembly canary. So if we look at canaries under buffer flow protection, see. Um, you can read about it here and figure it all out, but I'm not going to do that because it's going to take too long. Yeah. The gist is, um, is we, we do the read, then it does some stuff, and then what it does here is it tries to say, okay, let's load this, and then let's check to see. Oh, sorry, that's there. And then it does a few more things here, and then at this very spot right here, and this is the important part, it checks if this very point here, this 12, yeah, that point is the, yeah, that's what it was. if this point still equals the same value. And if it does, um, then this jump here will say perfect, and it jumps to CMD in 64. And if we look, CMD 64 is this no op here, which is basically it skips this line and goes to the next one. If it doesn't match, it calls error overflow, which means that somebody's overflown and it's a problem and they've hacked it. So let me give you an example. If we just try to overflow a bunch, typing a bunch of A's, it gives us an error saying, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> okay. Um, so what we've done is we've overwritten all those values. Um, but it's able to jump into the next spot. Now, in real life, if we were to overwrote the next line of code, it wouldn't be able to do this. Um, but this isn't real life. So <laughs> <laughs> this is just, it's, it's simulating. So it, it calls this error overflow line. Well, can, can you detect, because you know that, that like the canary
there didn't work and you could move it into so, a memory location to print that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you could. Yeah, but not in here. Yeah. Not yeah. with this. <laughs> and not with this it le this letter input that we have. Like yeah. we have very small input. We can't just put random bits of yeah. hex. So what we need to do is we need to buy put bits of hex, but we need to make sure that the spot in the twelve still equals what it what it equals here. So let's quickly figure out what this is. So I'm going to use my little site again. Come over here to hex text. Just convert hex to ASCII. And it gives us YRCN. YNRC. Y -N -R -C. It's made y up the hint itself. Yep. Okay. And now. There is a little hint here. It's hard to see, but you've got IBM and Intel. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the slot uh, 12 down from the heap? 16 down from the heap. 16? Yeah. It moves the, oh, wait, was it it moves the camera. So, the so what we want to do is we want to remember, OK, it's 16, so I'll show you why. Um, so this spot, where's my, so this spot here is 28. Wow. And this <laughs> spot here is 12. This would be so much better with the mouse. So 28 minus 12 is 16. So we need our 16th value to match what it needs to be in address and then the rest to be fine. So we don't care 0 to 16, we don't care. 16 to that address stuff, yes, we care. And then after that, we don't care. That is the canary. Yep. And so as long as we keep that 12 spot the same, we'll be fine. So let's go ahead and try that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then what was the ask? Also, the you might want to go over detecting the over, because you can just brute force detecting where it overflows via just. Like if you type in 15 characters in Go, you're in the same menu. If you I type in I, 16 in Go, it takes you that. What are you doing? I didn't do that. Yeah. So okay. So that's one way to do so it. So then, then I would do. I tried Y R N C, and then I did a few more, and it doesn't work. Oh, sorry. So that's what I typed. A A A A 16 times. Then I did Y R N C, and then A A, and it still didn't work. So those hints, Intel Inside and IBM, tell you Indian. a little hint about Indian. Indians. Indians. A little Indians. The little Indians. So there's a thing about Big Indian and Little Indian, <laughs> and I don't know much about it other than I was stuck on this forever, Indians. and someone said... It's basically how memory gets written. Maybe it's the Indian stuff, and I was like, what's that? And I went and looked it up, and I was just like, oh. So... Backwards. There we go. So we've got little Indian, and then we've got big Indian. So if you've got a value 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D, you know, in big Indian, it writes 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D. But in little Indian, it writes it 0, 0D, 0C, it's BA. Like is, it, is it first in, first out, or first in, last out? Right. Basically... We got what was it? it we tried Y R C N. Well, you can kinda, if, if we way, if we change it, y so we do Y R N C. Y R N C. That was kind of a hint because it's canary. Yeah, it is canary. So, so it, canary. the last letter here goes to the first. So we got C. The second to last goes to the second, which is N. Then R Y C N R Y. Oh, it says. Canary. Canary. When I saw that, C N R Y. <laughs> so, let's, so hard on that one. So let's try this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> 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 Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, and then it was C N R Y. C N R Y. Random gibberish. Okay. Bam! Duh! We finished it. So then this gives us a seg fault with debug information. Um, and what would happen in a real thing if we were able to overflow is it would seg fault and say it broke. 
But if you're smart, then you would take that. So we just did A's at the end afterwards. If we were to then, after that point, you know, at the right spot, put Shut new down. code, we can then make it run its own stuff. Yeah. But we're not going to do that because we don't need to. Um, Exit one. Let's see. Hang on. So we just unlocked a new LED. Yeah. That was three. Okay. So three is uh, the the assembly. Okay. So now we've got one last one. Then we're done. And that's this one here. Okay. Up. Uh, Enter the code seven four two eight one. Okay, and then it's this part which we recognize. So we decoded this, and we do. Let's do what it says. So it says transmit on channel five. No boost. So I'm gonna do transmit on channel five. No boost, but amp and filter. Um, disable feedback. So feedback is all the way down. Medium bit rate, so medium bit rate is medium. Uh, center balance, so it's center balance, and then finally use mixer and mono output. So auto mixer and then stereo. Okay, and then I try transmit, nothing happens. So this is the part where you mentioned it before, but he posted a hint. So, uh, uh, he said he he made a mistake. So if you during that point there you transmit audio that's crazy it won't because you have to because change have to yeah but you did this oh. stuff you did more so i did more oh i did do more yeah so if we look at <laughs> professor plum's tweets uh let's just look at the b-sides tweets i know it was on here yeah it's in the, yeah Okay, so this is what he wrote. If you're working on the bad challenges, I have an update to, for you. The QR message is missing some info. The following might help you. Um, NTSC, with, so I'll just copy that. He also posted it in the, in the Slack that was that B-Side spun up. So here it is. So I'm going to add that down there. And then, okay, NTSC with M. So let's set it to M. Okay, with echo canceling, echo cancel, medium gain, and high bit rate. Okay, and so those are the settings. Okay, now, do you guys want me to just scroll back or do you want to just continue? All right, we'll just keep going. Okay, so with that, then we hit transmit, and then it starts talking says I'm a hacker into my world and then we win the game so that's the last so I'm challenge I'm pretty sure that's max power is that isn't that the max oh, power max hack? oh max headroom yeah, and then power something power from uh, from hackers a movie or something and then so so crash the over overlord the overlord is the name of the terminal oh yeah crash the overlord and that's so the that's, terminal that's welcome to the overlord the objective of the game crash the overlord that was the other thing yeah, yeah. Can you go back to the Settings. Sure, let's, let's do. do... Yeah, I'll have something right. <laughs> have something right. Okay, is that good? Change the channel five. No boost, but amp. And, yeah. and like, so it says bit rate. I think what is, one of them you change. Yeah, yeah, one of them bit rate is wrong, and then you fix yeah. it to high. So bit rate high. Yeah. Center balance. Mixer, leave stereo off. Oh, I also don't think it'll transmit until you've moved your chip. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah, okay. the, the thing's Because the radio tower's the radio broken. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it won't yeah. transmit. <laughs> that's but yeah. right. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. That's the B-Sides badge. Um, if we do that, you get all 12 flashing lights. Super cool. Um, and yeah, that's it. You guys have questions? Like, was that good? What do you think? That was pretty good. Yeah. I was. I thought it was an amazing badge. badge. So good. Not and best, best since best. we won, let's just reset it. Cause why not play again? <laughs> would you go? Go. I never would have got. Yeah, I want to do the character. Part. Yeah. So what ended up happening at? There's a bunch of people who were at Saint Con, at 
B-sides, and we were all trying to figure out the assembly. It spent like an hour and a half all cracking at it together, and it was kind of hard. <laughs> it helps because Professor Plum, like that was his job, was reverse engineering malware and stuff for a long time, so he had to add that in. It's, I, I, I was, I, was uh, I, I took one class like forever ago. I was a little talented at it. I was okay. Cool. But, like, I looked at it and I was like, I feel like it's doing this. And the guy's like, you're incredibly close. Uh, you're on finish. the right track. You're going to be fine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I'm not too worried about that. But So anyways, thanks everyone for coming. Um, we're going to end the recording and we can talk more about it afterwards. Thanks, guys. Thanks.